Father, I'm asking that this morning you bless the preaching and the teaching of your word. I ask, oh God, that you open our hearts. But more importantly, um, let the information and the knowledge of your word bring us to a place of growth, to a place of integration, to a place of alignment, to a place of development, to the end that our prayers can be answered and we can have a story of change levels in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you want to still stand for the word of God's word? Please do. Please do. Matthew chapter 17, please. Please do. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, leaning down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers separately, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples that they, should, that they could kill him. That they could kill him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perfect generation, how long shall I be with you? You have not grown up. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I be here with you? Bring him here to me. Oh my God, God will not be disappointed about you and I. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I be here with you? Please bring him here. And Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, we felt embarrassed. Why couldn't we <laughs> not cast it out? Then you know what Jesus said, what we have been teaching this month, very important, pay attention. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, I spoke about this, that prayer thrives on a stable heart, and stable heart has to do with Romans 10, with the heart. You believe unto what? Righteousness. But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So the problem here is unbelief. But in addition to the unbelief problem, there's another critical problem. Let's look at it. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there. A physical, noticeable result, a shift. Move from here to there, and it will move. And I cut because I will together, please. And nothing will be impossible for you. However, what's not one? However, this kind does not what go out except by prayer and fasting. Let's pick up this morning conversations from there. Please get seated. Except by prayer and fasting. You know, Jesus is a powerful teacher of the world. Powerful teacher, powerful communicator. And Jesus has a fantastic way of penetrating, of getting across and getting across so that the word of God can find residence and we're seated in our hearts. Um, possibilities, limitlessness, they are all possible realities as long as we can switch to faith and choose and switch to a strong belief. If you can switch to strong belief and switch to strong faith, then we are going to enjoy possibilities. We are going to enjoy limitlessness. We are going to enjoy results that are going to be answered. Jesus said this situation that looks embarrassing and it appears that it's below your belt. <laughs> Shouldn't be so. Kneeling down. Look at that situation that we read. The Bible says that this gentle guy came down and, they, and, and when they come to the mother to the man, a man came to him kneeling down and saying, he was begging literally. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. I have a serious issue. Um, my, my son is epileptic and my son has suffered severely and I have issues. Now, are we all in that situation? How many of us are in that situation this morning where you are saying to yourself, I've been in this situation for a long time. Uh, don't lose this moment because it's so powerful. Uh, I've been in this situation for a long time. I've been parabolating. It appears that prayers are not really being answered. It appears that things are not really put together. Glory to God. Now, that is what the situation was. 
You see carefully, every time it appears that your prayers are not answered, if care is not taken, frustration sets in and you begin to beg. Can you imagine somebody who has a relationship with God but realizes that the situations are not changing and it turns to a beggar? Lord, have mercy on me. I don't know what's going on. My son is epileptic. And there has, I mean, this situation has brought embarrassment at several occasions. And the most funniest thing is this, Lord. I took him to your servants, to your disciples. And they could do nothing. It's like somebody say, oh, Pastor Paul, I've been trying to get your attention. I have this particular situation. And I couldn't get your attention. I went to Pastor She, went to Pastor She, went to Pastor Robert, went to uh, all these powerful guys around you. And I couldn't get things done. That was what you were saying right there. And Jesus brought about a very powerful teaching. And he said, listen carefully. There is no big deal about them and me. But have this difference is the state of our hearts. There is so much faith in my heart, maybe their own faith is not even strong enough. In fact, the world maybe is not even there. The real situation is that their faith is not strong enough. All right? Are we there? So when you are praying and you do not have faith in your heart, your prayer will remain unanswered. He said, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. It's quite embarrassing and quite tormenting. It's traumatic, the situation. I sense in my spirit this morning, every traumatic situation will end this morning. Amen. Thank you for being here. We've got to be on the same page. We've got to agree together in the spirit. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Everything that has remained incurable, under the anointing today, they shall be cured. Heart permutation. Internal diseases. Incurable infirmities. Eye problem. Hair problem. Abdominal pains. Chest pains. I don't know why God is calling names. Bones issues. Ankle. Difficulties in breathing. In the name that is above every other name. I decree on that this anointing. Every incurable situation are hereby cured. Amen. Finances, ministerial. Vesicle, social, entrepreneur. I decree under God. You know, as I'm reading that thing, an anointing hit this building. I pray for you. Your case will not remain uncured. I brought in, if you know where I'm going, you will know that it's only good that it's beginning with us. I came to teach this morning. He said, I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure. Ah. Incurable diseases bow in the presence of faith. He said, and they could not cure. Ah. Now, listen carefully. If you, this word is your word, disrespect your surrounding and rise in faith and claim it. Whatever is making your faith appears impotent, I stand on this earth to make a declaration. May they be supernaturally addressed now. Because the answer of Jesus was so direct. Hey, Sam, I didn't prepare for this. I just came with this one to prepare an hunger, to create an hunger in our heart so you can be ready to fast. Ah, why must this thing be embarrassing my faith? When a situation remains perpetually unresolved, it's saying that your faith is not available. That was what Jesus said, not Paul or Denny. It's embarrassing. It's epileptic, my son. And he deals with him separately, throw him into the fire. And we are so embarrassed. We couldn't get your attention. And we brought him to your disciples who have been around you at this way. And I thought, if I can't get you, I can get your guys, Jesus. But they could not cure him. I came here to make a pronouncement and to self notice every ancient perpetual situation in your life I serve them a notice of expiration and I declare that let them pack the 
your nose and leave your tabernacle and leave your body system and leave your business in the name of Jesus. You will no longer say, and I've been praying and I've been coming to church. Pastor Bobby, hearing your messages. Jesus said no. Me that preach with me now. He said no. I could not kill. I could not kill them. Then Jesus responded, you guys got to be with me. Then Jesus answered and said, let me tell you the problem. Hey, God, listen to me. If I say this, I didn't even preach my message, I'm fine. Jesus said, uh -uh. then just answered and said, the problem to the incurable situation is this. Oh, faithless and perverse generation. Your heart is not here. There is perversity in your heart. Meaning that there is a disconnection. There is, an, there is a disconnection. There is a strange movement in your heart against faith. Even though you are surrounding me, but your heart is not with me. Oh, faithless, perverse, diverse, digress, diverted. We're talking about it's possible you are thinking fear. Perverse. We are talking about forward movement. We are thinking stagnation. Perverse. We are talking about possibilities. You've loaded your mind with impossibilities. Oh, faithless. I'm perverse generation. Kilo Kilo wrong, fellow. How long shall I be with you? I will not be beseech you forever. How long shall I be with you? I don't know who's here. I came like a rugged man, still your pastor. I speak lionically and I have a shepherd's and a sheep's heart, a shepherd's heart to speak to you. It's time to change your location. It's time to change your class. It's time to grow up. Prayer should be answered. Things should be happening. I might speak like a lion this moment, but trust me, I see my shepherd's heart with me. How long will I be with you? How long will I be here with you? You should have grown up. You couldn't cure that thing. You couldn't change your business. You couldn't move things forward. You could have increased your income now. The sixth month of the year is almost gone. Oh, faithless and perverse generation. You still have not changed where you are. You still have not turned things around. What is going on here? <laughs> you see, that was the way I see it. Oh, faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? Somebody should leave the service today and go and cl close the door and say, ah, Pastor Paul came like a wounded lion this morning. You can no longer be babysitted for too long. Everybody must give to you before you survive. No, sir. You must beg before you make movement. No. He said, listen, bring him here. Look at it. Bring him here. Look at it. Bring him here. See, bring him here to me. You rebuke them for their incapacity and their incompetency. He said, but bring him here. Then Jesus asked, and Jesus rebuked the demon. And it came out of him instantly. And the child was cured from that very hour. Faith. He said, Kelly, Shay, but let me show you. You can do this thing. And after he exercised his dominion, his authority, his faith, his status, and his governing power over demons and powers and principalities, he now told them what he was saying about the rebook. Look at it. The next verse, he said, listen carefully. Don't just think. Then the disciples came to just privately and said, because they could not waste, they could not face his face. They could not, you know, when your leader is rebooking, you don't want to face him. He rebooked you and does the miracle. And uh, they now went privately. We can't, we can't talk to this man in the public. We are embarrassed. <laughs> he has dealt with us. He has flogged us. So they went to him in the private and said, tell us what went wrong with us. So Jesus said to them, because of your own belief. Ah! This will be the last time you will live in unbelief. Yeah. And now I know you are in the service. 
Today will be the last time you will live in doubt. I said this month will be the last time you will live in unbelief. Your unbelief will not incarcerate your progress. Your unbelief will not stop your motion. Your unbelief will not shut you down. Go where my head. Because I'm going somewhere powerful this morning. He said because of your unbelief. I am not speaking in doubt. I am not doing a show off. For as surely I say to you. If you have faith. As a mustard seed. You don't have to have faith. like Papa Deboye. You don't even have to have faith. Like whoever you thought has a great faith. If your faith can be so micro. Say micro. If your faith can be so tiny, if there's element and a measure of these possibilities on the inside of you, if there is a measure, a little seed of faith on the inside of you, look at what the Bible says. Jesus said, if you are faith like a mustard seed, you will pray. Say you will pray. The word you will say there means you will pray. You will say to this mountain, move from here to there. And it will what? Move and nothing will be impossible to you. See, Jesus Christ wasn't careless about the usage of wells. You will speak to the mountain. Say mountain. You can see how solidly rocky a mountain can be. And Jesus said, You will move the mountain. <laughs> so, whatever that's appeared like mountain, I don't know who's here today, hearing me. It is mountainous in your view, mountainous in your perspective, and it sounds so established by your spoken words today, by the effective flex and the fervency of your prayer. I see every mountain shifting ground. Thank you for being church. You shouldn't come to church to just look at faces. Thank you. You will speak to the mountain. Okay, move from here to where today. Shift, resort, testimonies. However, this kind cannot go except by fasting and prayer. In other words, as you implore the dimensions of prayer has been taught, back it up. Do what? But there are some stubborn problems. There are some what? There are some exceptional issues. However, you've done everything. You are having testimonies. You have seen results. I've she rebooked you. I've shown you the proof. Do what I've taught you. But don't be limited without teaching alone. Back it up. Because there are certain unique cases. You will need to sustain the frequency of my teaching and application. And also add up prayer and fasting. So while you are so confident that you are doing what has been taught. As your lifestyle. What do you do again? You back it up. So in case there are stubborn problems you are not even aware of, or some that you are aware of, you switch to prayer and fasting. Your faith is intact. Your belief is resolute. Your declaration is weighty and scriptural field. And you back it up with fasting and prayer. So in other words, you will never outgrow a need for fasting and prayers. Because exceptional cases will always be there will always be. I have had some few exceptional cases in my own life. Few. Exceptional cases. And I'm grateful to God. That God is still telling us to back it up. So as we take advantage of prayer and fasting, we are better equipped and positioned to address every exceptional cases. I sense in my spirit that is a miracle for the now in this service now. Somebody's not hearing my voice. That is what? A miracle for the now. And there are people in this building that God is telling me that your name is on a miracle for the now. A now miracle. Do you have some folks in this building that believe God for a now miracle? If you are that person, shout amen. Get up on your feet and do this. He said, you will say to this mountain, move. And it shall move from here to there. Come on. Come on, practicalize it. It shall move from where? From here to there. It shall move from where, sir? From here to there. It shall move from where, sir? From here to there. So if you can say, can somebody tap 
into the now miracles in the building and speak to your life and speak to your situations and speak to your mountain that faith on your inside you sit right now you can cure the problem you can destroy the cancer you can approve the HIV you can terminate the stagnation you can move all your difficulties you can release your husband you can release your wife you can close the deals you can cancel the debt you can overcome the problems you can leap over the wall you can open the global doors you can remove the obstacles you can remove the entrances you can release yourself into your long-awaited manifestations Fix your life. Talk to your destiny. There is a now miracle. There is a now miracle. There is a now. There is a now. There is a now miracle. And you shall have whatever you say. That is a now miracle. I see a now miracle with your name on top of it. It shall move from here to there, here to there. There are some certain works in the Bible you must not forget. They must guide you. They will be strong in your heart. One of such words you are going home with today is here today. You speak to mountains concerning the rent, concerning your application, concerning your job promotion. It's overdue. You are overdue for promotion, overdue for new season, overdue for new apartment, overdue for new ride, overdue for new pay, overdue for increase of status, overdue for expansion of a tea. you can speak to the mountain it will move from here to there oh your situation is not incurable your challenges are not insurmountable Evidence charge walk in your prophecies. Evidence charge walk in your manifestations. The rising of sons and daughters. The rising of the gatekeepers. The rise of the giant killers. The rising of the pioneers. The rising of the kingdom chasers. Of the kingdom stewards. In their tents. In their hundreds. In their thousands. The rising of kings and queens. The rising of the much peace of the Lord. Red and Emokos. From here to there, from here to there, and now miracle, and now miracle. Finally, speak to that sickness in your body. Go now. Speak to that cloud over your life and has refused to damp all. Pass it open. Pass it open. Radakatapoko Shada.
So the power to move things from here to there is where. So I'm no longer faithless. And I'm not perfasting in my heart. So the incurable situations are here by God. In Jesus' name. How many of you are returning back on Sunday with testimonies? Sit down for a few minutes. Certain biblical wells, scriptural wells, must travel with you. You must live with it, wake up with it, my son. Go through the day with it. My daughter, go through the week with it. You must be steered in the spirit realm. Your heart must be on fire with such wells. So when things are remaining the same, you are uncomfortable. You keep remembering the narration we read today. That Jesus was not preparing the disciples for not able to cure. He addressed and rebuked them. And then enlightened them. He addressed, he rebuked, and then what? Enlightened them. Why should you cure that disease? Why? Why? Why should you cure it? So the Lord spoke to me to share with you then, as we wrap up the service today, on what can keep your heart this on fire for what I call concretized conviction and the heart perpetually on fire. And that is most relevant in the school of prayer for it to be answered. In other words, you wake up and say, no, it must move from here to there. It must. That I say, conviction strong in your heart that propels you for that expectation. For that what? And at the same time, it sets you ablaze. You ablaze. That critical factor that does that, I want to share with you quickly. Give me your attention. It's called meditation. It's called the power of meditation. There are things you have seen from the face of the Bible that you have swallowed and is strong and rooted on the inside. Run with it, live with it. It must be your language, it must be your vocabulary, it must be your lifestyle, it must be your disposition. You must walk with that powerful conviction. And meditation is the key. The Bible speaks to us in Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you should not know. So every time you call upon God, God begins to unveil and reveal and unravel things that are way above your head. How many of us are ready for dimensions way above your head? I see certain group of people coming to me and saying, Sir, I caught visions. Who are they? I caught dreams. I caught some stuff. Because every time you are, in, you are sold out to prayer, and meditation takes over, you begin to assess realms of visions, realms of dreams that are way your head, above your head. You start seeing things beyond the mundane things. You start seeing things beyond the normals. You start seeing things, start seeing things. That's why prayerful people are seers. Intercessors should be naturally seers. All the prayer team in this house, you should be writing me the things God is showing you. And because you do not have a familiar spirit, you do not contradict what the Lord is leading me. You can't be lost in prayers and not be serious. You can't be a person of intercession and not be a person of revelation. No, sir. If you're a prayerful person, you will be revelatory. If you're a prayerful person, you will gain insight. You will catch into things that are above times and beyond times. You will gain access into what has happened, what is going on, and what's about to take place. You will crash into the revelation of wisdom of what must be done for a way out and for transformation. How are you praying every now and then and there are no strategic solution? No, sir. He said, call to me and I will answer you. And I will show you. If you have prayed for something for one month, by now there should be a strategic idea to get things done. Prayer is not what you just say to see manifestation bodily. Sometimes, prayer helps you to get things to be done for before the bodily manifestations. So the things you now do 
from the place of prayer is what now brings about what? Bodily manifestations. Are you kind of talking about now? Maybe you are believing God for your husband and God just show you what to be, do, to be doing. Change your hairstyle. Pastor Paul, is that also part of it? Yes, sir. It's, that's not just human knowledge. Say, change your hairstyle. Start putting on a nice one, particular dimension. Your heart could just be steered. And you just put on that kind of hairstyle and in one month, they started coming around you like ants around you, sugar. And the Holy Ghost strikes. Hey, what did I do differently? That is time. That is time. For a man of God, say, Lord, multiply the church. Multiply the church. In that place of prayer, God can just speak to you and say, change your dress code. Start wearing jeans on top. Wow. Massive inflow. Massive inflow. Of multitudes. Prayer will open you up to gain access to revelation. It will open you up to gain access to revelation. I am helping our spirituality. You can't be praying and there is nothing you are saying. If truly you are praying, you will be seeing something, sir. Either by dream, or by division of the day, or by a body, or by idea, or by anointed thoughts. Say anointed thoughts. By anointed thoughts. Certain thoughts begin to come. This is not a premeditated idea. Of any kind of thought pattern. Anointed thought flows into your heart. Oh, you are thinking and you are feeling anointing with that thought. And you can tell this is God. Come on. Oh, as that word came from my mouth, I sense it in my heart. Somebody's business is about to take a new day. Was anointed thought. Now, 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 when God begins to show you things, now what is happening is this. Let me now follow me, son. Hold on. What happens that God begins to open you up to what I call the word of meditation. So prayerful people should naturally should naturally be a people of meditation. And your intentional knowledge of meditation now helps your prayer life. This makes you so potent and effective in deliveries. Meditation is a gift. For effective prayer life. Meditation. What a gift. What a gift. To effective prayer life. What I'm saying is this. To meditate simply means to roll over in thoughts. You roll over in thoughts. You move. You think. You reason and process. It means to capture and understand it deeply. To do what? Capture and understanding deeply. To capture and understanding deeply. Now, when you are praying, you know, you should be in the place of what I call absolute understanding. Perfect understanding. Sir, you must never be ignorant of what you are praying about. Both in specificity, in the required scripture, the will of God, the disposition of God, and the dimension of God. You must not. And meditation is what brings to that understanding. Meditation is a gift for effective prayer life. So you come to the place of prayer with a loaded meditation. You are so enlightened. You are so loaded. You are so illuminated. You capture and understand it deeply. You are praying about finance and you understand it deeply from the place of meditation. About the will of God for your prosperity. Financial prosperity. You capture understanding concerning the will of God, concerning your marital bliss. And that informs how you pray, sir, and what you're praying about. How you pray, what you're praying about. So you are not praying at me, so you're not praying in confusion, you're not praying in dark. Meditation brings you into clarity of thoughts and agenda. Clarity of thoughts and agenda. The depth of God is unraveled by meditation. The depth of God is unraveled by what? Meditation. You shall speak to this mountain. Move from here and there. Move from here to there. Move from where, sir? Today. Abba. Sir, where you stay on that scripture, that understanding, in meditation, sir, what do you do? You unravel the depth of God. So when you are praying, you are praying from depth. That is what is called Jim Jim Believer in the recess. 
Jim Jim Believer is not mm, mag- oh, no, 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 no. Real Jim Jim Believer are men that understand what they are saying from his deepest depths. From where, sir? And your depth determines your weight. So, I'll wait till your words are. He said, bring, bring him here. And he rebuked the demons and the demon got out of his body. Say, depth. Talk to me now. Say, depth. Say, depth. You know, we live in the age that believers are operating on the surface. They can't hold water for too long. They can't stand for too long. They can't initiate results. They are not strong. This is the gift of meditation. The gift of meditation helps you to unravel that depth of God. You are as powerful as your meditation. You are as powerful as your meditation. Are you hearing me this morning? You are as what? Powerful as your meditation. Can you see that dimension I just operated away? He was, ang- he was hungry and he saw the fig tree. Even though it was not his time for, for the fig to bear fruit, he was hungry. And anger mixed with hunger. Let no man get from you again. Deep word. Loaded word. Sir, so, if you anything you do from the place of meditation is weighty. 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 Shout wait. Is weighty. Is weighty. And you must grow to that level. You are as powerful as your meditation. And that was why the instruction that God gave to Joshua in taking over from Moses after his death was to excel and flourish in meditation. Are you there, Midian? Chapter 1 of Joshua, like a lightly, verse 1 to 9. After the death, you will need meditation to take over and to establish your new assignment. Like a lightly. After the death of Moses, the servant of the law, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses assistant saying, <laughs> you see, a word is coming to my, rushing in my heart. After every dead season, you need to hear from God and stay in understanding to start new. To start what? The new. The new is possible. The new is attainable. The promise can be achieved. But after that experience, sir, pick up what God is saying and stay in meditation so you can travel into the destination. Let's go. After the death of Moses, Moses, God spoke to Joshua. Moses, my servant, is there. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. A word is coming powerfully. It is your word. Don't wait for another person to say amen. You will arrive at your destination. Amen. Every plate that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. Can you pick that word and go anywhere that you know is your own and go and step on it? Go back home. How many of you believe that God has a place for you around the world? Do you have an idea of the place? I think I'm teaching prophetically this morning. Do you, do you have an idea of the place? Who will obey God this morning? I said, do you have an idea of anywhere that God has for you in this planet Earth? Either business or schooling, whatever that measure. Canada, UK, when you get back home, don't, don't forget the word of God's servant today. Don't forget the word of your man of God as inspired by the Holy Ghost. Go and look for the map. Go and look for the, gra- um, the graph. Eh? The ma- Is it the map now? No flag. Go and look for the map. It's so easy. Just Google Australia. The map will come out. Eh? Go to the image. Say image. As simple as we are saying, somebody they don't know how to do it. They open Google. They say, I'm looking for, you know, just Australia map. Go to the image, bam, it pops out. Press it. It will pop options. Copy, save. Save it. Eh? Make it your, use as your DP. You can't press your phone, right? Look for how to print it out. And step on it. I did that before I entered the UK. I did that before I entered the US. And step on it. I have my destiny. I have something to do in this part of the world. Open now. I, I, you, see, I don't know. I came this morning with apostolic grace. Who want to collect? Can I speak into your immediate future? Anywhere your destiny has a portion on, on the planet earth, take your lot now. Now look at
Look at it. Media. It says, For the wilderness and this liberal law, as far as the great river, the river reference, all the land of the Ititites, and to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your word territory. Territory. Even me, please. Daniel, remind me. We're everywhere God has craft for us as I draft to let it to them going there. The word is not for entertaining, it's for application. It's not for entertaining. The other day, I was in Canaan and I carried the sand there. And I went to point where I believe God has given us. So the devil may be doing nonsense. The land is ours. Are you still with me here? It. So step on it. You will see what will happen. And I'm looking for the first testifier. Business will be coming from nations of the world. Your product will be sold in foreign currency. My time is running and I have a lot to say. Look at it. Look at it. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Calm down. I will not leave you, nor forsake you. Be strong and of good what courage. I am not speaking in doubt. For to these people you shall divide. As an inheritance the which I swore to their fathers to give them. Everything God has spoken to your fathers, Everything God has spoken to you by his words. Everything God has spoken to you in the secret. Hear me. The swearing covenant of God is upon it. And I move things in the spirit today. And I declare them being established. So much grace in the building this morning. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Only be strong. I'm very courageous. Don't allow any delay to delay to derail you. Don't allow any delay to derail you. Be strong. Now you may observe to do according to what the Lord which the, was, was commanded you. Do not turn from me to the right or to the left. Be extremely focused. That you may prosper wherever you go. Verse 8, 9. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate in it day and night. That will be observed to do our conduct that is within it. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have what? Good success. Look at verse 9, my dear. Verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Don't let your heart be worried. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Don't allow any government policies and situations and economic inflation. To stop your faith. I find not commanded you. Eh, I will be with you wherever you go. Verse 10. Wherever you go, I will be with you. Eh, then Joshua commanded. The officer saying, then he left in the strength of the instruction. After God spoke powerfully and apostolically upon him, the Lord said to him, Meditate. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate thereon. How many times? Yeah. What that means that you have heard the word, you are convinced what God is doing, and you are consistently sold out to that thought. Sit down for five minutes. You have heard the word, you have read the word, the word has been spoken to you. Then day and night, what happens to you? That means you are in grip of those works. You are in grip. There is a grip of those works in your life. What it means? <laughs> you are so down to that word. The beauty of every new season and transition is that it is a grip in your heart. There is a way God puts it in my spirit. I wrote it down. Oh, you're hearing me now. The beauty of every what? New season and transition is that it is a grip in your heart. So God spoke to Joshua. A new season, a new transition. But you know what? It must be a grip in your heart. 
God spoke to him, you will defy the land. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. Then the next thing is that this is careful. All I have told you now, all I have said, consider them done. However, it must be head grip in your heart. It must be head what? Gripped in your heart. When we open your heart, what we see is what the Lord has said. If you, by mistake, speak out, what comes out is what the Lord has said. You cannot, with that powerful thing God brought Joshua into, because I listen carefully, a new season is here, a new day is here, I've encouraged you, I've said to you, but it must be head gripped, head what? Gripped in your heart. This is what makes you a faith person, full of a well-seated convictions. So Joshua is so sure of the seeing of the Lord. He was so certain that the God of his father really met him. That God really encountered him and God spoke to him. He was so sure. That was why Joshua and Caleb could speak different language when the 12 spies were sent out. And so, when Moses died, God couldn't cut on somebody else. The other than one who has a conviction on his capacity and his capability. Please don't just get excited with what the Lord is saying. It must have a grip in your heart. Does that make any sense? Seven days after, it's so solid. A month after. Three months after. Five years after. Ten years after. Twenty years after, it's solid. Destiny is gripped by conviction. You must carry destiny in your heart by conviction. And that is by meditation, sir. He said, I've spoken to you now. Now meditate on it day and night. Day and night. Stay on it. Keep seeing the bigger picture. Keep seeing the excellence. Keep seeing the mighty move of God. Keep seeing better days. Keep seeing yourself as a mother of children, sir. You are not called barren and you cannot be labeled barren. Does that make any sense? You can't be labeled barren. You are not a barren woman. He said, more are the children of a desolate woman than he, that, that she that bears. You stay on that. <laughs> you are going somewhere. So it's great. It's great. It's great. The problem is that many people, they get excited when God is speaking like this. And when they are also personally reading their Bible or hearing messages on TV or radio or hearing their pastors again, so much stress, much excitement, but they did not engage in meditation for you to have a grip, a grip. When it has a grip on your heart, it means it's rooted. So destiny has been found in your heart. Never reducing in size, never reducing in potency, never reducing in values. God says, I will walk you to the manifestation. If you can employ meditation, rolling over in tongues, that's what it means. Having, you grab the understanding deeply. You are musing, you are thinking about it. Because we need to go. What do you do to then be strong in meditation? Number one, get the word, get the word, get the word. The word of the Lord is the source of meditation. The word of the Lord is the source of of God's ordained meditation, faith-filled, faith-oriented, faith-saturated meditation. Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the law, and in his law he meditates day and night, saying the same thing that Joshua said. Such a person will soon realize he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That brings forth his food in the season. Whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. Meditation plants you. Meditation waters you. Meditation gets you planted. Gets you rooted. Gets you well convinced. It makes you an embodiment of your confession. You are what you say. You just become what you say. And eventually you begin to bear fruit in your season. And none of your, season becomes, none of your seasons become dry. I used to in the building this morning. So please don't be far from the word of God. 
Don't be far. That is God's template. God will always give the word. God will always give the prophecy. God will always charge you up. God will always open you up. God will always open up your heart so you can get the word. And as you get the word of God into your spirit, you stay on it. You stay on it. You think over it. You roll over it. Thoughts over it. But it becomes so strong. Number two thing you must do. Surround yourself with inspiration. Surround yourself. If meditation is this powerful, that you are praying from the place of illumination, you must surround yourself with inspiration. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. Philippians, right? I beg your pardon. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. If you are not surrounded by inspiration, you will, be, you will soon expire. You must stay inspired. And the inspiration prompts you and leads you to quality meditation. Finally, say finally. I didn't hear you clearly. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are what? Oh, you are with me. Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is any praiseworthy, do what? Meditate on these things. Help your internal region to stay on course. Help! Your internal. The reason why you have to surround yourself with inspiration is to sustain the temperature, the conviction, the faith environment of your internal region. Because meditation is at its best internally. We see the fruit, but the real virtue and the real quality and the real value is here. And what inspiration does is that it helps you to maintain that region. He said, meditate on these things. Pura. Is it praiseworthy? Is it lovely? Is it pure? Is it faith-filled? Does it reflect the possibilities of God? Are they God's wonders and God's goodness? Does it suggest God's love, God's grace, God's mercy? Does it just, just suggest God's empowerment? Does it suggest God lifting people from nowhere and making them to become somebody? Does it suggest total turn around, set back to come back? If there are anything of such, please think on those things until you can pray from a place of zero doubt. Of a place of pure possibilities. Actions are made easy by inspirations. Through the internal and selective inspired sources. Intentional rather. Actions are made easy by inspirations. Through the intentional and selective inspired sources of inspirations. You, you have to be intentional. It's not everything you must allow to gain access to your heart. Some things come, you block it off quickly. And sometimes the way you do that is to quickly use something to flush the other out. But do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what, sir? By the renewing of your mind. So otherwise, if you do not renew your mind by God's word, you become conformed to the external happenings. The external happenings are the worldly affairs, are the worldly adventures, are the worldly activities. And many times, the worldly adventures, what activity we suggest fear, suggest impos impossibilities, we suggest constraint, we suggest anxiety, complain and murmuring. And the Bible says, don't subscribe to those things. But make sure that your mind stays on God's word. The Lord will keep you in perfect peace. Whose mind? Stay where? On him. Why? Because you trust him absolutely. Help your heart, help your internal region. So you can pray from a place of where illumin illuminated area. Number three, separate yourself. Separate yourself. How do you have strong meditation? Number one, as mentioned, can you remember? Get the word. Number two, surround yourself with inspiration. Number three, separate yourself. Solely three mood activated. This is not about mood swings that reduces you to despondency. I'm talking about the kind of intentional switch of seeking for exclusion so you can be able to think of what God is doing and what God has said concerning your destiny. So there must be an activation of solitary mood. The Bible speaks to us in chapter 18 of Proverbs 1 to 2. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. A fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own folly. So when you are wise, the Bible says one of the Signs of wisdom is that you have to separate yourself. Say separation. Sometimes not being part of the crowd could be your wise set, strategic decisions in life. So you can be able to think on God's word. Think what God's about to do with your life. God taught me this and I've taught us here again and again and I've said it again. 
You see, never be scared to switch into exclusive mood so you can dwell on what the Lord is saying to you until faith rises. And when faith rises, you follow the trend and you go in the strength of that faith in your heart. And you sustain it for over a period of time. Sometimes it takes you years. By the time God will give you the privilege to look back, I can guarantee you under God by grace and mercy, you will have covered grounds. And in covering those grounds, to your greatest surprise, you will have left things behind. And now I have two instances. The first time I was in, non, in America, I was in one church in Dallas that I celebrated the favor and the connection. Everything in that church wowed me. Everything wowed me. But I came back inspired. In fact, because I was so wowed, I told you the story the other day. I even used my honorarium to go and buy the microphone the time I saw there. To your greatest surprise, what I saw there is not what I'm even holding. What I'm even holding. What I'm holding is about five times better than what I saw. The other day I went back there, nothing wowed me again. Last two weekends or so, somebody was on me and I got into a particular church. I think I've been there before. And I'm looking at Eta Skater. Is it the same place I came the other time? What happened to you is this. I, see, I can testify. Is that every time you stay following God, meditating, and you, God give you the prayer to separate yourself so you can think about your life and still God's word. Not to be worried though. Not to run away from people. No, this is about your destiny. After the why, the things that were wowing you, you will have outgrown them. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. You will have outgrown them. Glory to God. It's so powerful. So you must learn to separate yourself. There is power in separation for wisdom exploration. For wisdom exploration. Jesus did it a lot. The Bible speaks to us in Mark media. Chapter 1 verse 3, 5 to 3, 9. Jesus did this a lot. If Christ did it a lot, you have to do it. And it will help your prayer life. It will help you to pray from illumination, from light, from understanding. For example, don't be offended. And if you're offended, take correction. Why should God tell you to leave your wife now that you're married? And you're having money. Why should God tell you? Because sometimes, if you don't give time for meditation correctly by God's word, you will soon hear strange things. But quality scriptural based meditation keeps you on track. So now you know you can marry another wife. God can talk to you now. Sometimes I get so scared when I hear church people say, God told me to marry another wife. God told me to marry the third wife. There are some pastors of God that has told them to marry the seventh wife. Not in the Old Testament. I mean 2024. When? When? Oh, are you, are you third wife? I'm not talking. 2024. They will not even say that I love to or I want to. They say God told me. I wonder what you are giving your heart to. You cannot be meditating through the scriptures and not found destiny. Mark 1 verse 35 to 39. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, Jesus went out and departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. See now. Separation to meditation helps your prayer life. The end, he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. When they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. The devil didn't want to see this one. Everyone is looking for you. The devil doesn't want to see this scripture. But the devil wants us to believe that until we are with people, people can be for us. Many people, they are just with people every day of their life, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. They feel guilty for not being with people every day of their life. And they have no time for seclusion. They have no time for meditation. They have no time to pray. They have no time to pursue their destiny exclusively. They are given to show. They are given to visibility. They are given to branding. They are given to advertisement. And they are given to socialization. And so they have no time to stay on God's word, meditate, and help the region of their heart to be faith-filled and remain so inspired and so they can pray the kind of prayer that will bring answer that will compare kings to search for them. Sir, your life is not valuable until men are searching for you. Please, write with the golden pen. God, there could be many teachings that want to override that statement. There could be many teachings 
that wants to override that statement, but write it up with a golden pen. The true meaning of a valuable life that is being searched, sought for. They must search for you. I don't care every other thing you are doing in the business arena to be seen. If there are no genuine testimonies of men searching for you, you are not. Like I told you this morning now, somebody was saying, is this a pastor? I've been praying. I'm looking for a pastor. Just get from Abuja. See, there must be certain things that suggest your spiritual value that people are having encounters and dreams to discover you. That's a spiritual value. That is a symbol that you are apostolically sent to that area. Does that make any sense? And do, you know this, do you know the story? The same place that we saw the first family and are still with us till tomorrow was the same place I saw this. I saw this. And everybody became humorous. I was, I was clashing this morning with them after we had done with evangelism. He said, sir, should we go back and start our church today? But it's the same place this was also happened. The same location, Blanco. The same location. It's an interpretation of spiritual value. The same thing about business value. Are we not doing flyers? Are we not doing uh, Facebook? Are we not on Instagram streets? We are everywhere. But if that is all that defines your life as a believer, you lack spiritual value. If that's all that defines your lives as an individual, you love valuable products because at the end of the day, people should testify and they are searching for you. Who did this? Who is this person? You must have regular testimonies of such things. Why you do other things? Does that make any sense this morning? Does that balance what I'm saying? Yeah. The devil didn't want us to see this. Everyone is looking for him. But he said to them, when they came looking for him, he was not moved. I pray for you here. May you have stamina to handle success. I've seen this same pattern about Christ. Every time he was eulogized, he will always switch to communicate the most important. Look at it then. I, me, are you still with me? But he said to them, let us go into the next town that I may preach there also because for this purpose I have come forth. And he was preaching in the synagogue throughout all Galilee and casting now all demons. Your assignment and destiny needs quality time of meditation in a quiet place. When they came looking for him, he was not distracted. You know, he said, oh, faithless and perverse generation. He was not distracted. Ha. There's somebody here. Meditation will learn to you your concrete value. But if we're in the mix of being given accolades and eulogize, you are not in any way distracted. They came looking for him. He said, guys, forget about this accolade and this. And we will be eulogized and this spoken about this. They're for us. They said, I'm let's go to the other side. And when he got there, read the Bible, he was preaching everywhere in all Galilee. You don't know how powerful meditation is. It's so powerful. Secluded, we help you. So you, you are clear in your mind. So I'm clear in my mind. You are clear in your mind. So you carry that to prayer. How will prayer not be answered? You are clear in your mind. Your children, your wife, your husband, your church, your ministry, what you do, your assignment in life, you are clear. Number four things that will help you to stay strong in meditation. Free yourself from heaviness and bitterness. You cannot stay in the midst of bitterness and heaviness and expect yourself to enjoy the greatness of God in the school of meditation. Ephesians 4, verse 31 to 32. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgive one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. For Ephesians 4, that's what that is too. You cannot be in meditation and be corrupted and polluted. It will blow you. It will blow you. Sometimes I just bless God for the gift of meditation. Oh, I just bless God for the gift of meditation. You know, sometimes when God gives you that grace to maintain that discipline, naturally you are just out of all the will of the loom. I just out of all the noises. I just out of all the worries and the bitterness and everything. By the time you come out, you come with a strength of purpose. But let me say this to you without being proven too strong. Say, Father, when I'm beating here and there, and the devil to discourage me, there is nothing in this world apart from God, the Holy Spirit, that has helped me the days of satanic beating than the strength of my vision. Every time I, I rescind it, into my shell, and I get back into my shell, to in the maybe discouragement wanted to put into my shell, and I could just 
cover myself and wrap myself up in meditation, my vision fires me up. Fires me up. That is what my vision does. I won't get it to the course of our time. But on Wednesday, everybody was doing the service. I want to teach about the benefits of meditation. What meditation delivers into your hands. And that helps you to have a joy, good prayer life. I will teach that on Wednesday. Number, 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 number five things that will help you to meditate very powerful and very strong is to so, saturate your mind with worship. Saturate your mind with worship. Worship is not just a music. It's a spiritual weapon. It's a, it's a spiritual weapon. It's a spiritual tool. It's a spiritual asset. We will need it. It's not just for fun and enjoyment and exclamation and stretching. No, sir. Saturate your mind with worship. The power of an environment saturated with worship is great. It opens up the portals and releases you into the deeper flow of meditation and great understanding. Can I be honest with you? I will be lying on this holy altar if I will not testify that my greatest inspiration, one of my greatest inspiration medium, if I tell you it's not worship, I enjoy it. And I found out, sir, everyone that is great in God, great in prayer, great in meditation, they are men that enjoy worship. There's a guy I'm seeing on Facebook right now. I had a perspective about this man of God before. God used to criticize churches. But suddenly, because of the Tinubu government, blah, 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 I realized that it's one of the very few pastors who are supporting Tinubu to come to government. So that caught my attention because I kind of had a soft spot for Tinubu then. Then and now. Then and now. Then and now. He didn't hear me well. I said, then and now. He didn't hear me well. <laughs> so, it got my attention. So, okay, I became calm. I said, okay, I think it's like, this, this man is like me or other people there. And I started realizing that this man is far away from his criticism. And I had to make an inquiry. And somebody told me, I said, no, you have stopped criticizing. But do you know what I cherish about this guy? He's deep in his unapologetically, don't lose this one, unapologetically deep in hymns. You will write it, you will sing it, you will buy hymns, English hymns. How do you become a very strong spiritual person and you have no worship sound in your spirit? No worship sound. Either in your Hebrew language, or in Ahusa, or in Yoruba, or in English, Whatever. There got to be an environment in your heart that is worship saturated. It opens you up. It helps you. That is why, listen carefully, there is no historical encounters that are not surrounded with worship. I beg the music team of this house, if you understand the power of your ministry, you will take us to realms every service. Because worship is a sound that helps us to enjoy our work, our relationship with God. It helps our worship. God will always come down in the cool of the day to relate with the first man he created. And what worship does is to give you a cool environment. Oh, it gives you a cool environment. When I, what, what do I mean by cool environment? An unrestrained environment. Zero distraction. The power of an, of an environment saturated with worship is good. It's great. It opens. One of the major blessings of a saturated environment is that it simplifies all matters in the place of worship. I thank God I didn't lose this point. All matters are simplified. Go on, try what I'm preaching today. Every time you are going through anything and you just switch to worship and you are lost in that worship in truth and in deed. By the time you open your eyes and you come out, the matter has been simplified. Simplified. Then plus your word-based life, your faith filled life, your prayer understanding, your meditation, you now begin to pray in response to that saturated environment of worship, sir. You have access to him. You enjoy your growth and you enjoy prayer being answered. Let's close. Second Kings 3, verse 15 to 18. Let's see what happened to support what I'm preaching this morning. Second Kings 3, verse 15 to 18. Who is there? Second Kings 3, verse 15 to 18. Second Kings 3, 15 to 18. But now bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Guys, you've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. 
And he said, Thus seeth the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus seeth the Lord, you shall not see wind, you shall not see rain, yet that valley shall be filled with what? Water. So that your cattle and your animals may drink. This is one of the most profound prophetic moments in the Bible. Verse 18. And this is a simple matter. See where I brought my word from. This is what? This is a simple matter in the sight of the law. He will also deliver the Moabite into your hand. It was like a big issue. Five countries against one. And they have to search for the man of God. He said, before I do anything, get me the musicians. You know the man of God? Eh? Elisha. He said, get me the man of God. Let me see. And as he switched into worship, eh, a very concrete and threatening situation became so simplified. He said, don't worry, don't worry. You may not see rain, you may not see... Eh? I see wind, but the valley shall be filled with what? With water. <laughs> You will not to be afraid. This is a simple matter before the Lord. Listen carefully. A problem is already solved largely when it's simplified. Once there's a big issue, simplified. For example, you are looking for 100,000 naira. And it grips your heart. Where will I get 100,000? Where will I get 100,000? You're already crying. You're already worried. You're already getting gone. And it's something a lie just came to you. Uh, remember in FCMB account, you have 10,200 naira. You access bank, you have 2,000 naira. Uh, start doing like so, she can give you 10,000. Some man doesn't mind being a blessing. Give you 10,000. And then this always happening about you. Can I give you 10,000? <laughs> you see, as we are having that kind of a talk, what happens to you? You just say, ah, simplified. So you have to then pray and believe for favor that whatever you are thinking now become a reality. Amen. But the moment it became, it becomes simplified, you find a sense of relief. That's what worship does. But the beauty of worship is this: it does not only simplify situations; it helps you to tap into the presence and the power of God to make things done. I pray for you today: you will not lose your meditation. From now going forward, you will enjoy your prayer life. A prayer life full of meditation. You will explore wisdom. You will find knowledge. You will find direction. And things will move from here to there. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you glad to be here this morning? Then joyfully and as a militant person, rise on your feet. God bless you. Oh, what a joy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we start with the last word God gave to us? Worship simplifies matters. Worship simplifies what? Matters. No song. You can give us your sound, but slowly, but no song. Can you maintain a worship atmosphere and see your matter simplified? Sincerely. Oh. But I don't know what this institution is, what the matter is. Just see it simplify. Okay, what are you going through? What is it? I want to pay money today, 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 today. I'm not saying tomorrow, today, 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 today. Things must happen. No, 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 no. Just, 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 just. Just be worshipping God in with. Our God. God in your name. Every day. Amen. Between your own, I thought they are with me, they will have helped me out. They will have helped me. But they are far away. Every crusade healer understands this principle. Men like Pastor Penahin understands it. They switch to worship. Men like Pastor Paul Nature understands this. You simplify matters. The blind, the lame, the crusade. The fibroid, the HIV, the cancer. Riaponke understand this. The reason why Pastor Christian Yakilome, all these powerful healing evangelists. 
So when they switch after pushing the wall, matters are soft, soft, simplifies, and the fate of them begins to happen. Lift up your hands, just two minutes. Let's worship Jesus this morning. Let your case be simplified. The evidence church understands, Pastor Paul understands. Don't wait for anybody right now. Lift up your hands and worship Jesus. Your case is simplified. Your name is your matter is resolved. Somebody call him Jesus. You are Jesus. How I love. I love to call your name. You are precious no, look, Jesus. Worship God and look at that matter. Look at that matter. You need a shop. You need a house. You need some answers from heaven. Carry it on two minutes. Worship. Worship God with your spiritual and body. I love to call your name. Your name. matter is simple before the Lord this week you will not be overwhelmed with difficulties as you turn to your right turn to your left matters are simplified that amen is not profound enough matters are simplified creative wisdom from above is in your spirit right now you are not stranded you are not confused this week, the portals of heaven are opened. The windows of heaven are opened. You will enjoy great results. I see wisdom downloaded to your spirit. I see direction downloaded to your spirit. Your paths are shattered by the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your ways are prosperous. You will arrive at your destination. You will get your heart desires done. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see you growing in meditation. I see you growing in faith. I see you moving mountains from here to there. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You are blessed from above. Wave your hands and worship him.